So this is a question asked uh, by uh, companies like Uber or Lyft. So let's say that you work at a company developing a new ride sharing app. How would you design a database that could record rides between riders and drivers? What would the scheme of the table look like and how would they join together? Okay, so, so we are going to design uh, basically a ride sharing schema, right? For mm -hmm. Uber, Lyft, stuff like that, right? We are companies in the same workspace. So one of the first follow-ups which I have is what is this going to be for? Is it like a analytical analytics based backend or are we thinking it's going to be a it's going to serve the website or the app? Which one is it? So I think it's gonna serve the website and the app. Okay. So this is going to be backend of uh of the app or the website. So when you have use cases like this you essentially are optimizing generally for latency, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be what should I say? The thing which we should be, our not star metric, if I may say so. So latency yeah. is what we should be optimizing for. Anything else which you think we should optimize for or how to measure success? Yeah, um, I think you're right. Probably latency and then potentially analytics down the line, right? So we do care about probably getting stats, um, recording, you know, like the number of rides that each user has taken, stuff like that on the user. I don't know if you have any other ideas if you were yeah. like, you know, building Uber. Well, I think uh, obviously once you have, once you have your website ready, you need to again design uh, analytics backend uh, whether it's a data warehouse or a data lake or a lake house, if I may say so. Mm. And then basically you use it for further machine learning, business analysis and stuff, right? So um, once you have your front end, which powers your app, you need to get the data out. This is probably a secondary system. So say it's a data lake or a lake house system on which you will do analytics and machine learning. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. So I'll say going back. So we are designing a ride sharing schema. First thing is we need to power the website. So we need a, a system one or a table one, which will optimize for latency. Okay. okay. And then, uh, then we probably need another table, which will optimize for, uh, analytics and machine learning. Okay. And both are going to be different again, because they're two different use cases. Okay, so let's start. So for the table one, which we optimize for latency for, let's think about, um, I, I, I'll give a data warehousing example because a lot of people have a data warehousing backend uh, background. So it's easy for them to relate to. So whenever we design a system like this, we want to start with something which is immutable in nature, something which will not change and record that thing first. Okay. okay. So in our case, uh, you can imagine like a trip ID is a unique identifier and the attributes related to that trip. If you re record at say a second level or whatever the granularity is, so trip ID along with event timestamp along with its attributes would define as the granularity for this table. So all your queries, which are coming from the app, as long as they know the trip ID, will give them very fast responses. Is it making sense so far? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So now you can think in AWS world or uh, we are talking about DynamoDB. So we are talking about a NoSQL database system where you optimize for queries on one particular ID. You can optimize for multiple as well, but generally a few key attributes. Okay. So we are designing a table which will run on NoSQL database. Example could be MongoDB. Uh, having my Amazon my, uh, badge up the sleeve, I would say DynamoDB. Okay. okay. So something like that would help. And then our table um, since it's a no SQL, so there is no schema as such, right? But you have to have some certain keys, which will always be there. Okay. So say our, uh, our table, which is, you can say is 
transactional table mm-hmm. this we will have we'll store data at this granularity which is trip id and event time stamp both of these together will form the unique key of your uh for your table so data would be unique at this level okay now what would the attributes be of this table obviously there would be a few critical attributes and columns are the same thing so we could have like a rider id we could have uh, the driver id and these riders and driver ids could be stored in different tables you could also store like a few bare minimum attributes like the rider name and driver name in the same table as well so that you because in no sql databases you don't want to join two different things okay you mm-hmm. wanted to get from the same place so you could have a few things which you know which will show on the trip in the same table rather than having in a different table now this is like depends very customer very use case specific things you could okay having all the rider attributes here or not is like debatable but i would say uh, whatever say you're taking an uber trip what's going to happen is your every second probably you are going to send an entry to uber saying hey i this is the rider id this is the rider taking the trip this is the driver id this is the driver name taking the trip this is the latitude uh the car is at this is the longitude the car is at right yep uh maybe the average rating uh of the driver whatever you need to show on the app right as long as there is a query coming from the app on the trip id and you sort it by the event time stamp then you you'll have everything well let me think of more attributes and before we go any further i guess mm-hmm. what are the benefits of i guess no sql versus a uh, regular relational sql database in this case so i guess uh, the biggest thing is uh, these relational databases they are they are meant up to they work only at a certain scale okay so if you're thinking of any traditional database you they go to the size they can be. like their physical limitations on how much data you can store in them mm-hmm. and they won't give you uh, like dynamo db if you optimize it very well on any no sql system you optimize it really well it will give you single digit millisecond latency so you could have 10 millisecond latency which is very very hard to achieve in a oldb system or a okay. on a traditional relational system so that's okay. why you need this now imagine so i guess this is the schema to answer your question what would the schema be it would be hey you'll have a transactional table which will have a trip id the event time stamp driver id write uh, write a name driver id driver name latitude longitude and uh, average rating along with some other you know attributes which you may feel are important whatever you mm-hmm. need to show on the ui that's it that you can include all that and then you can have two more tables which could be you know a rider table and then you could have a driver table you could have a car table also right Uh-huh. Uh, like the vehicle table that being said uh, and you know those can store as many attribute as you want but ideally this is going to be your main table this is going to serve your website this is going to serve everything so yeah these exist maybe for other use cases like when you are logging in if you are targeting the back end of a user profile or if you are targeting the back end of a driver profile or if you are targeting the back end of a vehicle profile those things can be here or there the latency uh, would be very easy to achieve because the volume wouldn't be much right like how many drivers will you have less than yeah. a billion right or how many riders or vehicles you have so uh, the schema design over here is very easy right this is the one which needs to be well thought of and architected right that gotcha. makes sense yep okay now let me add some more practicality to this okay Mm-hmm. Uh, which is that a simple schema like this would work but realistically um you would have regionalized tables that is say if you are running uber in us or if you are running uber in canada right yep. then you don't need to share the same table right because 
your ride is specific to that country right now gotcha. and if you are say in southeast asia say say you're in india then you need to probably store the table in india region right if you're running it in australia you need to store the table in australia region that's because you don't want a australia query to come over from australia over the network traveling to the us and then you know give you will stretch your latency so gotcha. uh, realistically when you design such systems you're talking about regionalized tables that is you'll have a transaction table uh, you could have it at a country level you could have it at a city level also so you're talking about say transaction underscore country name and all of the schema would be the same except that you know your us queries would only be in us also there are some countries which don't want data like i think uh, europe there are specific countries which won't let you store the data yep right so that's where uh, you could have regionalized tables that way your table volume would be low and also you will optimize for network latency um any questions on that no i mean that makes sense um but i guess like when we have different tables it does make it harder for uh the second use case right which mm-hmm. is analytics and so with that i guess how would that kind of design factor into it um here okay so let's go to the other use case it's actually ha- going to help the second use case if you have something like this so uh what's going to happen and let me think about this okay actually for your second use case uh i i would want to first ask you what kind of queries would you want to support first like what what's the business insight what you're trying to capture with your denormalized table for analytics and machine learning yeah so i mean i think there's some top level metrics that we can think of rides per day average daily active users uh, daily active riders daily active drivers stuff like that and then as you added above as well it's machine learning right so uh we probably need to predict you know how many drivers to put in a specific area and so mm-hmm. we'll need some of that data to build a model as well okay give me a few seconds to think about this on the screen okay. of the other one and then i also remember your question which is how does the above regionalized table help in the other part okay so the way we can do this is uh, actually i uh, thought of one more optimization which i can do for latency so let me finish that and then i'll jump on the other one okay uh, realistically what you will do is also you will put a cache in front of your app so the app is going to talk to the cache so you can think of as redis or mm-hmm. memcache something like that and then whatever is not in the memcache will be fetched for dynamo db or sorry gotcha. any no sql database that way you'll have utterly that's the best you can do right now <laughs> okay. okay so i just thought of this so i thought i'll cover this so yeah so idea is app what it will do is say if it's checking for something say it's checking for the last uh, trip how it's going something to show on the ui it's check if it'll check if it's there in the cache which is like uh sometimes microseconds it can check that and if it's not available in the cache then it goes and fetch from that no sequel and then okay. there's time to live concepts and stuff but yeah i know this is not like a interview interview so i don't get into details but yeah that's yeah. how you optimize in <laughs> in real life okay going back to your second question which is how do you denormalize the table again now we are optimizing for you know some analytical queries and then we are optimizing for machine learning right Mm-hmm. so what we'll realistically do is basically we'll take these regionalized tables and again you have to be slightly be smart about how many regionalized tables you can club together in okay. a single place because of gdpr requirements and stuff but say if if you can move countries data around like whichever countries allow you to move data you basically dump them somewhere in a new unified table okay and you you can dump them one is to one so whatever you have 
you just time them without transforming them as it is into a unified table so you could have your regionalized table one two three depending on which countries allow you data exports you dump them into a single unified denormalized uh, table so now you have your full dump of data okay, okay. so and, and the reason this is helpful is now why i was saying this would be helpful is because every table realistically would have at what speed they can spit out data right like how many gigabytes per second can you dump now yep. since you have multiple tables you can dump them in parallel so that's why it helps okay gotcha okay, okay. now um, once you have your data if you go back to our original design we said our data is a trip id and event timestamp and when you're trying to answer these business queries, you probably, this granularity is an overkill for you. Okay. Because business is going to say, Hey, how many average users you are going to have? Right. Yeah. Now one trip ID essentially has multiple rows to it. Say if a trip lasted, um, 20 minutes, assuming. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if a trip lasts trip A is say 20 minutes and your recording is at a second level, right? So you're saying for one trip, you'll have 20 cross 60, uh, which is like 1200 records for a single trip ID. Now this is too much data from a business perspective. Okay. So what you will do is you'll take your unified denormalized table one. And then what you're going to do is for each trip ID create uh, your denormalized table to where you'll take n rows and bring it to a business granularity. So that's why I asked you, you know, what metric are you optimizing for? Yep. So what you're going to do is you're going to create your denormalized table to whose unique key would be the business key, which makes sense for the business. Let's say trip ID is that key. Okay. And here, now you can think in terms of data warehouse, like all the concepts which you will apply in a data warehouse, you can use this here, that which where we talk about dimensions and facts. Dimensions are things you want to measure about. So say you're trying to measure about users, you could have a user table, you could have a customer table, you could have a, sorry, customer rider, the same thing. So you could have a rider table, you could have, you know, your vehicle table, stuff like that and mm -hmm. then there is fact right so you need to ask as many business questions as you can to figure out what things are we trying to measure about say are we trying to measure about users riders vehicle you will also have your date dimension that's a pretty important table uh, mm -hmm. in data warehousing so you'll have your date dimension so yeah and then fact is something which is immutable. Some what can what will not change about it, right? Yeah. What will not change about the business? So generally, I would say there are two fact tables, or at least you'll need two fact tables. One is a transaction, right? Or say payment. Let's say payment, right? Let's say there's a payment fact table, and then we could have our trip fact table, right? And this trip fact table. We will, we can make an assumption stores out of say our example of 1200 records. It just records the last thing which happened. Okay. So the most recent record of the trip will store here. Um, is it making sense so far? Yeah. So oh. mm -hmm. I'm understanding correctly so we have our specific dimensions we have you know other things like payments and trips mm -hmm. and then we're looking at the most recent record mm -hmm. so i guess specifically then um once we've put it all together i guess what does our schema kind of look like here sure so first thing i usually ask people to do is what's the unique key of this table this is very important to understand when you mm -hmm. make any table because that defines the granularity right okay so trip id would be our unique key right and then think on how can you partition this table right because to scale something like an uber you have to be very smart 
about how you partition a team okay okay now there are some practical limitations also which i'll talk about but things like trips always happen on a certain day right so mm-hmm. you can probably partition this table on a start date you could also partition this on start date and origin city right yeah because these are immutable like start date of a trip won't change the origin city won't change if you just take city that might change someone would might be traveling interstate or inter countries or something like that right gotcha. so these are the two main factors about our say denormalized strips table what else so you want to uh, now sort this table so you're going to, you need to define the sort key or say the z order or the index and this is defined on how people query your table okay so this is really dependent on based on customer queries which you expect which will happen okay um okay what are the now it's just schema right so these are the important ones right uh and after that you can have attributes like what we want to measure on let's say your question was rights per day okay so we have our trip id we have start date right so we can just uh do you want me to write the sql we just write the sure yeah so say select star from trips and the idea is whenever you write a sql for a big table idea is that you shouldn't have to join more than one table or I, sorry the best is not to have a join at all okay idea is mm-hmm. how do you design a table where you don't have to join it with anything at all okay second is hey can i hit some partitions right so if a business user is there who is responsible for some location right so we can expect them to give a origin city or origin country filter let's say city say you run san francisco you are the program manager for san francisco city right so you'll hopefully try to give like a filter for sf and then maybe you are interested uh in say looking at one month data and say hopefully you will give a start date between say current date and say current date minus 365 Okay. And I want to add so what is the uh benefit of having a partition versus just normal attribute? Okay. Uh imagine if you have a table at US level, right? What's going to happen if you give it if you just hit an attribute, it has to scan the whole table. Mhm. If you have your ta- data partitioned by date, okay? And uh or city or both both is best so what's going to happen is that it's not going to read the whole table say your data is like 1 gigabyte and san francisco represents like 10 mb okay so if you partition it by city then it will know that i need hey i don't need to read this 1 gigabyte data set i just need to scan 1 mb gotcha. so your query will run like this because it would know what to hit partitions are physical tables behind the scenes it's just that the technology abstracts it away from the user so physically gotcha. also on the disk if you partition by city each partition would be written to a specific space on the disk you can think it as like uh, if they are literally different if i can give website terminology then it would be like every table has a different uh, website to it sorry every city yep. has a different website to it so you have th- that's what you achieve by partitioning and you always want to partition by a natural field first which is like date like every day new data is going to come is going to sit in a certain partition what that assures is that any time new data shows up it doesn't actually have to affect folder partition so if you wrote data for today then any data which is going to come tomorrow is not going to impact the partition which we wrote today that's why the date partition helps and we don't partition every single column though right no, because no. it would be too costly yes so uh 
again uh, you need there are some practical limitations to it uh, again for every technology it could be different but i think if you are creating right now with the state of technology if you're creating more than 100000 partitions you are over partitioning that's right <laughs> it's like a lot of metadata your metadata about the partitions would be so much big then then you'll have to figure out how to read that metadata does that make sense i don't know if that makes sense or not that makes sense i think yeah <laughs> so it's cool. like we have a big data problem already and now you created metadata which is the size of big data so now you need to figure out how to solve that metadata problem for the big data you created about the metadata <laughs> gotcha <laughs> so so imagine if you partition by city and say uber let's uh, i don't know how many city op- uber operates in but say if it operates in let's so say like at op- 5000 let's say it operates at 5000 right cities and and if you are partitioning by date right so even if you store 20 days of data you will probably hit like uh, 100000 partitions so you gotcha. really don't want to do that is my math right 5000 yeah. 50000 okay they probably yeah. not in 5000 cities right? yeah so i so maybe city doesn't make sense you can partition by country right yeah then uh then what's going to happen is you know how many countries are limited right so you could have like 50 countries which they operate in right and say they store a last 1000 days of data right you can retire older data right so 15 to 1000 is probably going to get you where is it going to hit you 50000 yep yeah. so now you'll have i can say you have a reasonable partitioning strategy Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Did I lose track? Hold on. No, I think uh, I guess to wrap it up. Is yep, there anything yep. else that we need to think of? Let me wrap wrap it up. So writes per day, simple, right? Basically, you are going to count the trip ID, right? Count trip ID, and that will give you uh, your trips for a certain day duration. Your daily active users. now depends on the definition of the user right so but you remember i kept the rider id and the user id in my denormalized table over here mhm so now i don't have to actually join with the rider table to figure out any attribute as such about the rider right so even my daily active user rider customer you or vehicles you have all your information in this table right in your denormalized table so any time you'll have to write a sql you'll have not have to join multiple tables you can achieve gotcha. by a single table so that's that's what you want to do let's go to the predict how many drivers on a certain area so this is a machine learning use case now in this particular case this is where the dimension table comes in because say you are trying to figure out the customer attributes or the vehicle attributes so mm-hmm. that's why uh, not this you'll have to join your dimension tables right uh to create like your new machine learning data set right and once you have your data set then you can you know keep it either keep it up to date if it's a production model so you can have a pipeline which you know joins uh denormalized uh denormalized tables with the dimension and creates your attributes and this would is very specific right it really depends on what machine learning model you are going to do how many attributes that is um or well, you might want to add attributes in the future so i i would say if you practically you would want to like if it's a production model you would want to have it as a separate table and mm-hmm. run it you know when at whatever cadence you want to do machine learning say you do machine learning once a month like you train your model once a month then you could have it as a table else if it's only one time experiments then basically you just write a query get the data and do your training and then don't create like a physical table so that's how i think you can solve this problem yes okay cool 